Hello. So I didn't film for a couple weeks. Every time I sat down to edit my old vlog, I would be like, Mm. And I was just really frustrated with my voice, the way I was communicating my opinions, like the way I looked. And also, I haven't been reading that much. I've only read one book since we last talked and I mentioned it in the other video. During my absence, I finished Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. This is a book about a girl named Ramona who lives in a small town. Her family's not that rich. By not that rich, I mean they're not rich, they're poor. <laughs> and she lives in like a tourist town that's off the ocean or a lake, I forget. But this boy comes back into her life named Freddie, who she grew up with during the summers when he would vacation there. At the beginning of this book, Ramona is sure of herself that she's a lesbian. But then once Freddie comes, Ramona realizes like, oh, I kind of feel things for him. So she's reevaluating her sexuality and learning that sexuality is fluid. I really liked this book because I think it was a really mature example of teenagers. So on that front, I'm not sure if it's realistic or not, but I really enjoyed that whenever there was a problem in this, the characters would be like, okay, let's talk about this and not just be like, Chad isn't calling me, what does that mean? I don't know if that sounds condescending like I'm shitting on other YA, but I just thought it was a super mature example that talks about more nuanced problems than just do I like this boy? And that's a good word to use describing this book because it's very nuanced. It's an interracial relationship, Freddie's black. Also the main character is 6'3". So I loved it. And just a bunch of stuff in between. So I really enjoyed this. I gave it four and a half stars. The only half star taken off because it took me so long to read, which isn't the book's fault, but I just wasn't in the right headspace for it. But also the ending of it kind of came out of nowhere, like the plot point. She could have so easily thrown in some foreshadowing to what happened and she didn't. So it feels like it just came out of nowhere. I actually really, really liked this. As you can see, I've got lots of tabs in there. It's got some great quotes. Let me just read you a random one. Rosie stop scratching my chair. That cost $130. This quote says, it's sad that sometimes we let ourselves believe that if it's not bad, it must be good. Today is Saturday, January 25th. I was planning on it being a super chill day. I really needed to clean my apartment. I, I know, every time I vlog, I talk about cleaning. Today's the only day, because I'm gonna get it all done with. The book I'm currently reading, this is like the longest intro clip ever, I'm sorry. I was fortunate enough to get an arc of Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. So I'm currently reading this. I am 115 pages in, which is like barely anything. It's the 600 page tome. So this is like the 50th book in the Shadowhunter series. I don't deserve to read this because I haven't read like all the novellas and I'm not like super, super obsessed. I was at a bookstore in Dallas that Rhiannon works at. Rhiannon has a channel, I'll link them down below. And they were like, hey, I have this, do you want it? I literally peed on the floor of their bookstore. So huge shout out to Rhiannon, please go check them out. This is literally like the sixth book in whatever series order you wanna read these books in, but it is about the children of the characters in Clockwork Angel. And it talks about Cordelia Carstairs. And basically it's about Cordelia who comes to London. And there's a bunch of other stuff like James, is technically like part downworlder and so he keeps getting thrown into a shadow realm and they don't know what it means. I'm 100 pages in and like any Cassandra Clare book, nothing has really happened so far other than setting up the characters of which there are many. There are so many basic white people names in this that I'm just like, who? It's like Matthew and Christopher and Jake go to the park. I'm like, this is one of those books where it's not bad, but I just don't want to read it until I actually sit down and start reading it. And I'm like, oh wait, no, it's good. So it's just gonna take me a little bit to get into it. Also, there's a character in here named Anna who wears like tuxedos, whereas everyone else is wearing dresses. And I'm like, if she's not gay, Cassandra, I want to talk. So that's my thoughts on this so far. I probably won't go too in depth with spoilers or like talking about what happens because obviously it's a really, really anticipated to release. And it literally says, Please keep spoilers to yourself. Christy just went home, we had dinner together, we watched a couple episodes of Cheer, the Netflix show, which I've heard glowing reviews of and I just think is okay. But for the amount that I talk about cleaning my apartment, I really wanna show you what it looks like after I'm done cleaning. So ignoring what's in the sink because I just made dinner. You walk in, the floors are clean. I finally hung this mirror over here so I can see my appearance before I leave for work. I don't know what this outfit is, but green on purple is okay, right? All the cat's food area is all mopped. I need to put this box of books in my car. Then my desk looks a little better. Gordo is modeling our table. Christy left her wine here 
and I don't drink, so that's gonna be interesting to see how I use that. But then the remnants of our movie night. And then my bathroom. So she's all clean. We stand. Since my life is finally put together and not in shambles, I think I'm gonna sit down and continue my book. I know that all of y'all say that you love when I talk about my life in my vlogs, and I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for caring. But when I edit them, I'm so bored. <laughs> So I'm gonna cut the chit chat and I'll just give you a reading update when I read. Oh my gosh, look at Rosie doing a loaf on her loaf. Hi baby. Also, I'm sure I've talked about this, but Jules, my friend, got me this tumbler thing that's Frozen themed. And not to be a horse girl, but the scene where Elsa tames the water knock is like my favorite scene in Frozen 2. So it's kind of my obsession. There's a horse inside of it. <laughs> I love her. Thank you, Jules. I use this literally daily. I just about fell asleep on the couch a second ago while reading, but I made myself get up. I read two chapters tonight, which is pretty good. More than I've done in probably two weeks. So I'm on page 174 now. It's just really confusing. I realized why it's confusing. Every character in this book refers to someone else as my cousin, and I just don't know who's related to who, what the family tree is. So it's just difficult to keep everyone straight and like who's in what family and who's related to who. And this is starting to rely on a lot of information from the infernal devices, which I do not remember. It's really Really difficult to review because I'm not hating it but I would also like to read something else. <laughs> I think a big factor when I go into books like this is I wait to hear what the hype is and then if I hear it's really good then it makes me excited to read it and since no one's read it yet I haven't heard people be like oh my god it's so good so now I have nothing good to look forward to kind of but oh my gosh I'm so tired I keep yawning. <laughs> I'm gonna read a couple more pages then probably pass out. Tomorrow is a lot less busy than it was today, so I anticipate I am going to do a lot more reading. I want to finish this book soon. I'm two books behind on my Goodreads challenge. I started The Handmaid's Tale last night because I'm itching to read it. But I will say I was crying a bit because every time Jim is in this book, I'm like five stars. But I think it's bad that the only reason I want to read this book is because I want to see characters from the other series. Because I could just reread the other series. Okay, for real, I'm tired. Good night. <laughs> Are we hungry? And that's the first step of my day. Otherwise they will not be quiet. <laughs> okay, good afternoon. I had a brief cry this morning. Uh, this morning I realized I hate the way I look in every photograph I've ever taken of me, so. I had a cry about that. Needed to lay in bed and watch TikTok for an hour, which I did. So I'm gonna continue on with this book and try and get like 300 pages in or maybe 400 if I can. I wanna finish this book this week because it's taking me a long time and I don't want this to just be a chain of gold reading vlog. And I know that just sounds like I'm rushing through it so I can get to something else, which is partially true, but it's actually good. I'm just complaining. I've been reading on the couch for a few hours. I'm now on page 250. And as predicted, the first 200 pages are all set up and now it's actually getting pretty good. The character that I predicted is a lesbian. I'm correct, so I love her. Let it be known that I would put my hand in a blender for Anna Lightwood. The worst part about reading all day is I just want a snack. I keep pulling out new things to just start eating and it's bad. But whereas before I would just get like all the characters confused and I was really not into half of them. I think I said like the only characters I care about are like these two. Now I like all of them. <laughs> we got a little bit of a taste of them and I'm like, okay. I get it, but I stick to my conclusion that I really wish I would have reread the Infernal Devices before this because I just heard the names Henry and Charlotte and that took me back. <laughs> I forgot they existed and their son is in this book and I'm just like, <laughs> this honestly reads like a spin-off trilogy to that book rather than like a separate work in the same universe because it pulls on some of the beef that they had in that series and it's like yeah back when my mom and dad fought in this war and these creatures like, were alive and this person died and this person's mad it's very involved but i'm gonna continue not touching my phone because that's the reason why i'm getting as far as i am see you in a couple hours 
So, I had a two hour partially accidental break to watch a couple episodes of Cheer. Just wanna update and say I'm on page 330. And I feel like every time I open this and I read a lot of pages, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got so far. And then it was like four pages. I'm gonna try and read to page 400 and then go shower and go to bed. It's picking up. I'm liking it, but I'm just mad at myself. I took a break to like make a character list of everyone in it. And while I was on the wiki page looking at like all the different families and who's from who and who's related to who, I realized all of these characters have been in other stories and like mentioned in other places. I just hadn't read it. So I'm really kicking myself that I haven't read like Ghost of the Shadow Market, which I got for Christmas. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have read that. There was a story in the Bane Chronicles about one of the characters and I like skimmed it because I was really bored reading that book. And I have never even glanced at Tales of the Shadow Hunter Academy because I was like, I don't care. And I'm mad that that's basically required reading to get to these. And even if you don't read them, like I'm still enjoying the book, it's still comprehensible, but you can tell in every chapter. It's like, ha ha ha, remember when this happened? Ha ha ha, remember that story? So it's like you're missing a big chunk of the folklore. And at this point, none of Cassandra Clare's books can be read as standalones, but I also don't enjoy reading novella bind-ups as prequels. <laughs> so a lot of the story feels undercooked, and really vague. It looks like I'm not wearing pants, I just realized, but I am. And I'm just cranky that I know from here on out, I missed a lot of information before going into this. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> Anna Lightwood, like trying not to spoil y'all, but she literally already has stories she's been in and fan art posted of her. So like she's already a character that people know about. And I just kind of feel silly because I'm sitting here like, oh, these are all new characters and they're not. Hello, welcome home from work. Not to you, to me. Just my baby. Okay, bye. Today sucked. I don't want this to be a lifestyle vlog where I just turn on the camera and complain about stuff, but at the same time, my mood affects my reading. I cried myself to sleep last night about dumb stuff. And then in the morning, my coworkers were just like saying stuff that was getting to me and it stuck with me all day. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get home, but I got home to two packages. Oh, hello, source books, okay. So one of these is a book from a publisher and this one is my fairy loot box. So I had a bad day. I just want to haul some books. Oh, so I actually have an arc of this that they asked if I wanted and I accepted. I was going to review it next month, but here we are. I guess I'm finishing it off with a finished copy. Oh, how cool. Oh, they sent this to me because I requested the arc, but I haven't even read the arc yet. Whoops. So I love the idea of this book because it is the princess and the pauper retelling I've always wanted. It's about this noble woman who wants to be like a seamstress and this lower class woman who wants to be trained in magic. And so they switch lives. They pretend to be each other so they can do what they want. I think it's a female female romance. And then somehow they get looped into this rebellion and helping out. So I've been so interested in this since they first offered it to me. Clearly I've not read it yet, but hi Gord. What are you doing? Hi bud. Now I have a finished copy. This comes out at the beginning of February and if you pre-order it, you'll get this map comes with it. So thank you source books. I still plan on reading this and I'll probably do an ARC giveaway if I enjoy it. Now I have low battery, but I have a whole fairy loot box to unbox. I'll risk it. This month's box. So if you're unaware, I bought Fairy Loot with my own money. This is the box that I've always wanted to try out. And then coincidentally afterward, they emailed me and asked if I wanted to review them. I said I already ordered it, so they refunded me for three months. This is month two out of three. I really enjoyed last month's box, but I have not read the book from it yet. Um, but they have a history of releasing some of my favorite boxes or books in their boxes. So I've been really interested. This month's theme is Moon and Stars, which we got a couple teasers for last time, but I didn't read too far into. First we have, I think it's a necklace. This is a Moon Phases necklace. Girls and guys, it's not social hour on the table. And then one more little packet, another jewelry item maybe. Oh, it fell. Oh, it's a keychain. Even the darkest of stars keychain. Okay, I have not read that. 
But it's a dragon, so I think you can know what a dragon is even if you haven't read it. Oh, it's glow in the dark. I am a keychain gal, so maybe once I read this, if I read it, get some use out of that. That's kind of what I base these on, is what am I seriously gonna use? Oh, stop, these are fairy lights. Yep, okay, so then there's like a little string of star lights. I had a string of star lights in my dorm. They were bigger than that. I don't know if y'all remember that in 2017, but I had those hanging in my dorm, so I'm a fan. I'll probably put those on my bookshelf. Is this a pillow cover? Because I really don't like pillow covers. Yep, it's a pillow cover. I'm never gonna use this. I'm just gonna tell you right now. So the back looks kind of like this DreamWorks logo, and then it says, with freedom, books, flowers, and the moon, who could not be happy? Happy. That's Oscar Wilde. Here's the thing, I just roasted it, but my apartment colors are blue, so I could honestly buy a pillow and use this. I was salty at first, but we might be able to make it work. But typically I'm not a fan of pillowcases. If this were any other color, I probably would never use it, but okay. It sold me. And then, oh, these are cute. Moon and star paper clips. I don't know even how well you can see that, but they're star shaped. And then on the back, they're moon shaped. Still so much in here, what the heck? Oh, a trinket dish. Wait, I love it. I am a sucker for trinket dishes and this one is a moon shape that's like holographic. I like this a lot. I'm gonna put this in my bathroom. I'm gonna put stuff on it. We love to see it. And then in every fairy loot box, you also get some tarot cards with characters on them. I don't know who this is. <laughs> Wait, is this <gasps> Serpent and Dove? I'm gonna have to check the spoiler card afterward. I think these are the, well, maybe. I don't know. And then, is this a journal? You have me into the last stars in the galaxy dot. Yeah, this is a little journal based on Illuminae with stars all over it. That's cute, I'm gonna bring this to work. Okay, and then our book in here, as always, it's in this little pouch. I know based on last time, it's like a Bolivian inspired book. I think it's, I think I know what it is, but I'm not positive, so let's just. I'm gonna close my eyes. I think it's the one with like the colorful cover and it's, I don't even know. It is? Oh, it is, okay. There's a couple more things in here as well. There's some fan art. Ooh, stickers. We love to see it. My camera died, but it lasted longer than I thought it would, so I'm just gonna continue. So this is, like I said, a Bolivian-inspired fantasy book that its own voices, the main character's parents are both Bolivian immigrants. And the synopsis is really confusing. <laughs> So from what I understand, it's like a magical world where there was this kingdom, but then a Gordo, what, Gordo, those are my lights, not for you. So the main character is like one of the last people remaining. She's like pretending to be someone else. And then someone wants her hand in marriage. And so she has to pretend to be like the princess or I'm not sure what a condesa is. I don't know that much about South American politics. But the main character has the ability to weave moonlight into threads. And so she's like working for this underground rebellion and like leaving them secret messages with these threads. It sounds so confusing, but I have read a lot of books where it's just difficult to describe, but I promise you'll love it. So this is one that gives me hope. Um, I think this is a special edition cover. When you open it, there's a little moon embossed on the cover and then the back of the dust jacket has some art that matches the cover as well. I think those are our two main characters. Based on the track record of books that Fairy Loot sends out, I'm sure that this one will be interesting. Margaret Rogerson is like the number one blurb and she wrote my favorite book of last year, so I'm gonna give it some hope. Oh, I need to see what these were. If I'm right and it's my babies, hold on. Really? It's from The Ember and the Ashes. We got The Ember and the Ashes last time as well. So I'm confused. I don't know who this is. Thank you, Fairy Loot, for providing a free box. I'm really obsessed, even though I never read the books in a timely manner. I'm just salty that I missed all my favorite books and now I feel like I have to get all of them to make sure that these are my favorites and I'm gonna keep up with it. Hi, I'm in the bath. Mind your business. Also, there's a crackling candle over there, so that's what that noise is. I'm on page 508 of Chain of Gold. So like, we almost done. And here's the problem I'm encountering. We've solved the conflict, everyone's doing great. There's 70 pages left. And this is exactly what Queen of Air and Darkness did, where the story ended and then there was literally like 150 more pages. So now I'm like, oh no. Hi Gordo. 
Yeah, at this point, I'm kind of anticipating it's gonna have a cliffhanger. And there were a couple parts where I was reading in the middle of, and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, if I would have had to wait two years for that plot line to be finished up, I was like, no, 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 no. No fools, no clowns in here. So I feel like I want this book to be over. And yet, I got 70 more pages. So when I get to the end of this, which hopefully I'll finish it tonight, I will let you know if those 70 pages are worth it or not. Something I also realized while reading that, you know, I'll tell you afterward. I'm literally naked right now. Okay, bye. First of all, cuddling my mans. Second of all, I finished my book. Three weeks later, I didn't realize I'd used that many sticky tabs until just now. Wow. This is going to be disappointing because it looks like I loved it. But I all right. Here's the best way I can explain this. I feel like I just read the middle book of a series because I missed so much prior information. Because I should have read the Shadowhunter Academy and Ghosts of the Shadow Market, but I didn't. So this feels like it wraps up a lot of plot points that happened previous to the book starting. The book says it's about Cordelia Carstairs, but it's honestly about five different characters. And Cordelia is kind of the main character, but also kind of not. I don't love the love story. It's doing this thing where it's like, we know what's happening, but the characters don't know what's happening and it's infuriating. I don't love the direction that it's going. The next book is gonna be interesting. I just didn't love it. Like, I will say, I think this is the series of Cassandra Clare's that has the most characters that I like. For like, Lady Midnight, I really only liked like, four characters in it and like three of them were side characters but in this one I really like James I really like Cordelia I really like Anna I really like Matthew there's just so much cool stuff that Cassandra Clare could have done with the kids who are part downworlder and it just ended up focusing on like angst and romance which even by saying that it sounds like it's really romantic and there's like kissing scenes and stuff but there's not because it's the 1900s so they're like they don't want to be called out for being sluts so like no one's kissing no one's doing anything everyone's just like staring at each other like hmm i love you but they don't do anything so it's not like a bad book it's just stupidly long. The plot lines are weird because this book starts after you've already read about the characters so if you're just reading this as a standalone then you're kind of left in the dark. I'm just very conflicted because I like the characters a lot but I don't like what Cassie did with them. I guess there was just so much potential here. When this comes out I'm very interested to see how everyone else enjoys it but that's a wrap. I'm now going to pass this off to all my friends who want to read it. <laughs> Finally, literally today my my boss at work made a joke like you're still reading that book so we're done it's over so the next book I want to read I actually already have open in my nightstand The Handmaid's Tale this is like the oldest book on my TBR and I have been itching to read this so I have already started it I'm on page eight I really want to read this because this is like the jumping off point for a lot of books about feminism every book that talks about like post-apocalyptic restrictions on women's rights always are like Handmaid's Tale inspired or like Margaret Atwood blurbs it so I enjoy reading books that look at like gender issues and feminism from like that modern lens and um like a dystopia lens and I feel like to fully appreciate them. I need to know like the OG material that a lot of it was inspired by or you can compare it back to because this is so classic. So far I've already put a couple sticky tabs in. The writing style is beautiful. It's gripping already and I really want to read this so I can watch the TV show because I hear the TV show is just bonkers. It's so good. And also for years I thought that the women on the cover weren't women and they were mice. So, I'm, I'm now learning that's just a hat. So I just opened the book and saw the word nunnery and the brain cell left in here is like, pack my bags and moved into a nunnery. Interesting development. Hi guys. I'm in my car in downtown Fort Worth because Kristen needed me to drive her somewhere for our job, but she only needs to drop something off. And she was like, can you just drive me there? Then like drive around for 10 minutes and pick me back up. And I hate driving in the city so much. So I was like, I'll do it just so that I get practice driving in the city and get comfortable with it because I know I hate it. I drove around for like five minutes before I was like, I'm gonna get lost. I do not want to keep driving. So I pulled into like a parallel park situation. I'm not paying to be here, which I 
think is bad, but if a cop comes up, I'm gonna be like, my friend is down the street, I don't know where I am, I'm just looking at my map. I'm just proud that like I'm defeating my fear, but I got like 40 pages into The Handmaid's Tale last night. I'm really enjoying it. It's easy to read, even though it's like a modern classic. It's in first person, which I like, and it's not that typical, but then again, it was published in like the late 1900s, so a little bit more modern. I didn't realize it was like a, this girl used to be in like our world, and it was like so close to our times, because she's like, me and my boyfriend Chad used to love to go to the beach. Now I can't show my face in public, and there's people on the streets with guns, and we have to walk in pairs everywhere, and we're women, and we can't do blah, 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 blah. I just didn't realize it was so close to her being like, my life used to be normal. I thought this would have been like a generational thing or like a fantasy book. It's like a real dystopia. <laughs> oh, look at that tree. Oh, cute. Look at my good boy. It's the Gordo's vlog now. <laughs> anyway, good evening. Tonight I have been taking it the heck easy. I've had no plans after work all week and rather than sitting around on TikTok, I'm finally getting my reading mojo back. It took a couple weeks. So I sat down and devoted my time to The Handmaid's Tale and I'm now on page 120, so I'm a little less than halfway. This book is slow going only because the font is small, but this copy only has like 300 pages, so I'm liking it. It's interesting though. It's not how I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was gonna be a book about like these women are like at an instant to where they're forced to be pregnant and like if you can't get pregnant you get thrown out. That's not the case. <laughs> I can really see the 70s inspiration for this. So it's basically set after Vietnam and the birth rate has been spiraling and the kids that are born have birth defects. Basically the whole world was panicking that like women don't want to have kids anymore and like mass chaos ensued. A lot of stuff is still sort of unclear but long story short there's now these like walled societies where there's commanders which are basically like masters of a family and if them and their wives can't get pregnant these handmaids live with them and are like the what's that called when you have a baby for someone else I forgot but they are in their place so I mentioned earlier that I was surprised that this book talked so much about like the before because I thought this was just gonna be like a they were born in the society I think it adds a really interesting layer to why it's happening and like what the reasons for this world are. It's also interesting because it's like we're clearly 40 years past when this book is set so like it didn't end up like this so there's a little bit of your suspension of disbelief but the main reason why I like this book is because it's kind of a soliloquy about loneliness as well. When I critique dystopian books and I call them realistic I'm usually talking about like the plot of it is realistic and it's feasible. Like I'm not just reading a work of fiction, like it made me believe that that might actually happen one day. Like I would say The Hunger Games isn't necessarily realistic, but there are a couple books I've read like, what's it called, Louis Erdrich's book, Future Home of the Living God, that it's like, okay, that might happen. Whereas in this book, the plot isn't necessarily realistic, but the character is so realistic and she really humanizes the world even though you kind of have to suspend your disbelief for it like I said. So she's just recalling a lot of her old memories and one of the things that I really identify with with her in her monologue is she talks so much about like loneliness and the things that you have to hold on to to cope and those are just concepts and books that I find really fascinating like obviously I'm a Shatter Me stand, so like touch and human contact is something that I think is a interesting jumping off point. Which actually there was a really good quote in this that was like, the last time she had sex with her partner, she's like, I would have died if I would have known that was the last time it would ever happen. But it's not a lack of sex that kills people, it's a lack of love that kills people. So there's just a lot of really good quotes in here about that. I just finished. <laughs> an entire sheet of sticky notes. I have to grab a new one for my nightstand, but I am marking the heck out of this because there were a lot of beautiful quotes. It's written really well. It's a little bit wordy, but it's still easy to read. Sometimes I read it loud to my cats because it's entertaining. But the entire time I'm reading this, I'm just thinking of how could they possibly translate this to a TV series, so I'm really interested in watching the show after I finish this. And I have no idea if this book is gonna have like a dreary ending that's like very melancholy 
melancholy and like sort of is a shout out to like hey sometimes things don't get better or if it's gonna have like a whole redemption where like she escapes and she's reunited with her love like I can't decide if this is gonna have a happy or a sad ending and that's kind of worrying but it's only 9 30 so I think I'm going to cuddle my puppy also, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but I'm gonna talk about it and I'll just be vague about it. Today I was invited to moderate a panel and my first instinct is like, no. <laughs> Cause I've moderated a panel before in high school and it was terrifying and that was at like a small book fest. Now, obviously I've gotten a lot more confident since then, but these are like authors that I know and love. <laughs> and I don't want to automatically opt out because I'm anxious and I know I'll be nervous. Cause like anyone would be nervous like addressing a crowd. But I just don't know what to say. Cause obviously that's a great experience, but I'm just terrified that I'll suck. I got up early this Friday. I am ready to relax. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I had no plans and I'm trying to do a thing where I don't just go on my phone <laughs> when I have no plans. Oh, hi Elsa, we love her. So I'm going to throw my phone and I'm gonna try and get a lot further into The Handmaid's Tale this afternoon. Maybe finish it, maybe not, I don't know. I did not read at work at all because we went out to lunch today. I hope y'all's Friday was good. By the way, I just realized I'm in the same shirt I went to bed in last night. This shirt is so soft. It might be my new favorite t-shirt of all time. So expect to see me in this every time I'm not at work. Hi everyone. Last night I got really distracted. I read a bit before bed. I woke up and read some this morning. Now I'm gonna try and finish off The Handmaid's Tale because tonight I have to go to my aunt's birthday party so I wanna get this done before I go off and do that. So right now I'm on page 230. I've got about 50 pages left. It's a little bit repetitive at this point. This book was a reaction to like second wave feminism. And now that we are a wave past this, it doesn't necessarily stand up to time. There's parts of this that ring true and there's definitely like a moral here that still has gravity, but I tried to open the balcony for my cats to go out, but this is all that I hear all day, every day. And this is another thing, like I just paid thousands of dollars to move out so I could film and like have my own place. And when I try and film, especially on the weekend when I'm home and it's daylight, this is what I hear all day. Okay, now that I'm cranky, let's read. Okay. I finished it. So I got to the last chapter and I finished the last chapter and I was like, that is such an open ending. Like what the heck? I realized it's part of the book. It's not like an afterword. The last chapter does this crazy thing where it like breaks the fourth wall and talks about, I'm not even gonna spoil it, but it was the weirdest ending that like changes the whole tone of the book. So it was interesting. I still say it feels a little bit dated. I think a modernized version of this for a TV show is gonna slap. So I'm really excited to see what the TV show does with it. I think I'm gonna give this like a four stars. It wasn't what I was expecting at all, and I wish that it could stand up better to time, but this probably would have been better for people reading it back when it was first published. So now that I'm done with that, I need to get about my day, I need to start some new books, I need to edit this vlog, so thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.